Hey, Carlo, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Oh, my gosh. I got to get it. I have so many questions to ask you. I have so many things. I'm a fan of yours. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I, I'm honored to have you here. Uh, I want to uh, start off by saying Mandalorian. We want it back. Uh, you're fantastic, and it is back in March. Finally, it's coming. You have something I want. What? Exactly. Ah! And you know what? I got to tell you, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm honored to be here. You are the king. I've wanted to be here for many years, and finally, you invited me. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Come on. But Mandalorian is a great show. I really love doing that show. But you know how to do it. You know how to create a character and make a legendary character. Here you are, though, acting opposite a very cute puppet. I got to tell you, I will squash that little big-eared bastard. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Look, I walked by that puppet, John Favreau, who called me and said, do you want to be a part of this show? He said, I have good news, I have bad news. I said, tell me the good news first. The good news is I wrote a role for you uh, of Moff Gideon in Mandalorian. I said, what's that? He said, it's a Star Wars. It's a new Star Wars show that I'm doing. I said, OK, great. He said, what's the bad news? The bad news is that all the money is going into the volume. And he started talking technically and talking about the story and all these good things. And I said to him, John, I want to work with people I like. That's the bottom line. I did not want to say, came very close to saying, I would do it for free. No, you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you don't say that. No, but you uh, loved it that much. I loved it that much. And I said, he said, are there any requests? I said, I have one request, please. I must have a cape. And he said, done deal. Wow. And that, that, that just, that was you. It, it was me. It sold me on everything that I could have a cape. Because you know, this show allowed me to feel um, like a kid again. You know, it made me dream again. It made me be in wonder again. It made me feel like I could go any place in the universe and, and carry my dreams, my hopes, and my imagination with me. Wow, that's me. I kind of feel that way watching it. That's a great way of putting it. It really, it really is one of the most creative uh, shows to watch that and to actually watch uh, Grogu come to life. Or is that, what, what did you call it before it had a name? Well, it was called The Child Yes. for a long time. And it was sitting on a desk. And I walked by, and John and I were chatting. I think he's a genius. He's written such a beautiful show. David Filoni, his partner, is also fantastic. This all comes out of a relationship with George Lucas and um, Joseph Campbell. So what we love about the show, you may not know, is that it's the power of the mythology of the show that you can see your hero and your heroine within Mando. And we walked by a table, he said, hey, just casually, you wanna, you wanna take a look at the, the child? Wow. I said, certainly. And child. he pulls off the canvas off, and I looked at this practical child. And he explained to me, it was gonna be this, it was gonna be that, CGI. I said, no, this is perfect. And then the puppeteer walked by at that very moment, and the puppeteer said, do you wanna see and talk to him? <laughs> I went, okay. And the child opened its eyes, turned its head, wiggled its ears, and I was in a... You can't take your eyes off of this child. Grogu is fascinating, mysterious, intelligent, smart. And I looked at John, and I said, John. I said, John, this is the star of the show. And he stood back, and he scratched his chin. He said, you think so? I said, I know so. And every scene that I'm in has to be with this child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put it in my contract, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you crush it. But then, I mean, everyone loves you. Uh, we love your character, even though you're the, the villain. But just like, uh, also uh, uh, online, a, a lot of fans want you to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I love what Marvel does. I love that the fans can see me in this universe and, and are proposing not only one character, possibly Magneto, possibly Freeze, and the biggest ask is Charles Xavier. So, but look, I, mean, I want to play a good guy, and Charles yeah. is smart, he's good, but I feel as if there may be um, some mileage with me and Marvel. I know I love what they do, I know I love creativity, so who knows what could happen, keep uh, putting it out there. Yeah. Uh, I'm the fans love you. The, uh, the, I heard a rumor, and tell me if this is true or not, that you may or may not have something to do with Barack and Michelle Obama relationship. Oh, my goodness. So I love what Barack Obama has done and, and continues to do to forward the human spirit and also to exemplify someone who has a wonderful morality and who is in service. I believe that to be in service is our best bet for our own life. So yeah. 
I was at a Democratic convention, uh -huh. and uh, I was uh, standing about mm, from here to the monitor from Barack when he made his speech, and I was so very impressed. I was with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. We walked out. He said, I'm going to get the car. And I said, okay, I'll wait for you. And uh, I'm walking, and uh, I hear, yo! And I'm like, who is yoing me? You're like, Sylvester like, Stallone is here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yo. not in the neighborhood. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, yo, again. And I turn, and I see these two gentlemen, and as they start coming toward me, I realize one is Barack Obama. I'm like, what, you gotta be kidding me. He's like, I just gotta talk to you. I gotta talk to you. Do the Right Thing is one of my favorite movies. Tells me a whole story about how he bought Michelle ice cream and how they went to see Do the Right Thing Absolutely. for their very first date. <laughs> and... So I, I saw the future, yep. and I saw that he um, was just a beautiful human being and knew who he'd be. I finally got a chance to tell him, you're going to be the president of the United States one day. Just stay the course. You said that to him? Of course I did. Yeah, of course you did. That's exactly the way to do it. That's exactly right. You knew it. I knew it. Uh, I, I want to talk about uh, the, this new series, Kaleidoscope. Uh, uh, before I even kind of get into what it's about, I like the idea that's on top of the idea is that, and tell me if I've got this correct, every Netflix account is, is set up differently. Some you have different algorithms or whatever like that. So when I watch Kaleidoscope, I will start at a different episode than if you watch Kaleidoscope. It's just the episodes are all different. Correct. Correct. One of the fascinating things about Kaleidoscope, which I'm very, very proud of, is that their delivery system is that you can choose how you watch it, which means you're choosing how the story unfolds. There are no numbers, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Um, there are only colors, orange, blue, green, yellow, white. Uh, yeah. It is violet. And so it's fascinating. It's a kaleidoscope of color, thus the title yep. that ties us in. But the most wonderful thing is that the story is connected via character and event. One event surrounds all eight episodes. You should watch White Last, I suggest. And it spans 25 years. And I play a character named Ray Vernon in the beginning, who is a master thief. And if I told you how I prepared for this role, you'd be excited too. Mm. Uh, so so I, play, I play this master thief thief who gives up one life, gives up one identity, and becomes another through circumstance of an events of the show. What in really drew me to the show was that you, as an audience, I, as an audience, would have a choice as to how I wanted to see it happen. And there are all these Easter eggs and clues throughout all that connect every story. So you can see one complete heist. It's about a heist that took place mm -hmm. during a hurricane back in the late 70s, early 80s, of $70 mil billion in unsecured bearer bonds. And because of this particular heist that happened in history, we're loosely based on that, the U.S. government changed the law. There can be no more unsecured bonds. So since then, all bonds have to be registered, so you can't use them for illicit means, i.e. buying arms or drugs or jewelry. So this particular heist is an exciting one, but it's more exciting because it, it pits a, a, a ne'er-do-well group of thieves yeah. against a large industry, uh, a private firm that will hold your money and your jewelry. And it's also a revenge story. It's a fabulous piece I had a, I had a chance to really excel in physically and also mentally. My preparation, I was in an airport and I thought to myself, I'm gonna play a thief. How do I sneak up? No, come on, I'm no kidding. How do I sneak up on somebody stealthily, be behind them without them knowing? This really happened. I'll tell you the truth about me. I am a bad man. So. <laughs> I sneak, I sneak up on a lady, she's walking, and everyone's on their cell phone. No one's paying attention anymore anyway. Yeah. And she had a pen in her coat pocket, and her coat was open, and it was flapping a little bit. And I thought, let's see how good I am. If I could just get to that pen with two fingers. And so I snuck up on her. I was over her right shoulder. And I trailed her, and I got my fingers in her pocket, very much like this patch pocket. And I took the pen and I slid it up, and then I dropped it on the ground. Yes. I didn't want to steal it. No, point proven. I, point, point proven. Point made. I did it. Point made, I can do this. And you know what I did? What? You, oh, wait, I, I made I know the Malcolm X movie. You know, what did I do? Tell me what I did. You told her, excuse me, miss, you dropped your That's pen. right, baby! <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. Come on, bud. <laughs> so proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's over the clip. Here's Giancarlo Esposito in Kaleidoscope. Take a look at this.
one can pinpoint the exact moment it all fell apart. <laughs> Giancarlo Esposito! Kaleidoscope is streaming now on Netflix. We'll be right back with a performance from Always. Stick around, everybody. Hey, hey.